with that, we go to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Kelly, for five minutes, and I thank him for his patience. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for being here today. Uh, the question really isn't about the the patriotism and the heroic, uh, heroics of the people that lost their lives that day. It's really what can we do to prevent that from ever happening again? And and I am uh, I'm kind of surprised. You know, I come from Western Pennsylvania, and people look at things in a, maybe a little different fashion. When I'm not down here in Washington D.C. amid all these brains and all the intelligence, uh, and and you get back home and you talk to people, uh, if I were to say to you, Lieutenant Colonel Wood, what does 9/11 mean to you? This last 9/11? Just no, just any, if, just 9/11. Like I would say, December 7th. What does December 7th? 9/11 usually it's means. It's an attack upon the United States of America. Mr. Nordstrom. The same. Ms. Lamb. The same. Ms. Ambassador. Absolutely, sir. Okay, so if you can all connect the dots right here, right. why in the heck did it take so long for all these highly uh, briefed and intelligent people to try and figure out that it actually wasn't a 15-minute YouTube video? and actually was a 9-11 event, a terrorist attack. Now, I don't know that it, this stuff about what's classified and not classified is getting confusing for me because I sat in a members-only briefing, and, I, and, and Mr. Chairman, I ask you, and this is on September the 20th, with Secretary uh, uh, Clinton and some other personnel, is that something we're allowed to talk about or not allowed to talk about? Uh, if it was in a classified setting, the only thing that I would think would be appropriate is any inconsistencies you've seen in testimony today you could relate. Otherwise, the specifics, uh, I couldn't judge it. From okay. Well, well, it comes down to this, what caused this? And, Ms. Lamb, I, I read through your testimony. It had to be horrible to sit there and watch it in real time, what was going on. And, and I read another account where, th this is kind of strange, that same night, this is about the ambassador, at 8.30 p.m., the ambassador said good, good night to a visiting Turkish diplomat outside the compound, and the streets were empty. But at 9.40 p.m., Noises, gunfire, and an explosion were heard by the agents located in the TOC building in, in, uh, or TOC in building B. It is absolutely preposterous to me that we would watch uh, Ambassador Rice go out and say what happened five days later, that I would sit in a briefing and it was, no, you, you have it all wrong. This is not a terrorist. This is a result of a 15-minute YouTube. Now, we are either in denial or unfortunately, and I, and I know some of the members are concerned because uh, I've got to tell you, it's very unfortunate that terrorists don't recognize that this is an election year. And they tend to just do what they want anytime they want to us. And when we have a weakened position around the world, and when we leave our embassies and our consuls and our people as unprotected as we do, and then we say, you know what, this is terrible because this is 27 days before an election. Why are we bringing it up now? And I ask the same question. Where the heck were we before 9-11, this 9-11? Why weren't we questioning it then? My goodness, uh, 230 security incidents in Libya, in Libya between June of 2011 and July of 2012. Of those attacks, 48 took place in Benghazi, two of which at the U.S. diplomatic compound in the scene of the September 11, 2012 terrorist attacks. And we are still saying, I think it's a result of the video that was on YouTube. And this is based on intelligence. Now, listen, I've got to ask you, Ambassador Kenny, because you say you couldn't possibly have had a different idea about it than Secretary Rice did when she went before the, the, the nation on September the 16th. I'm going to tell you, this thing smells Mr. from every single angle. Listen, I mean, it waddles like a duck and quacks like a duck. It's a duck. And for you to come in here and say, well, it was based on some of the things I knew, but I can't tell you all that I knew. We've got four Americans dead. And I got to tell you, it's very upsetting for me to go back home and look at those people in the eye, people who don't do what we do here with all the briefings and all the intelligence, just guys that go out and work every day and women that go out and work every day, and they can come home and they can figure it out, but we're still trying to figure it out and piece it together, and you watch it in real time, and the account was that they the ambassadors that night saying goodbye to a Turkish friend outside the gates, and everything was quiet. But my goodness... Those terrorists got a hold of that, or these Islamic extremists got a hold of that video, and between 8.30 and 9.40, they decided to just go crazy. And Africa's on fire. And Mr. Norris, thank you for pointing out, as Mr. Romney did, that hope is not a strategy. And I feel sorry for you and Lieutenant Colonel Wood to have to come here because it is you who are on the ground. You're not watching in some faraway room in real time. Your people are there in real time. We've watched our colleagues be killed.
And the question doesn't become, what is it that we didn't know? It is because we have become lax. We have dumbed down. We've turned down the Dow. You know, by the way, at the same time, and I know it's about the money to some degree, right? Although I saw a whole list of all the things that we were able to do to you. For, for, apparently it wasn't for the money there. Do you know that at the embassy in Vienna in early May, we did a beautiful, beautiful presentation of the embassy going green. Spent $101,000, $110,000 on a little electrical thing to plug the cars in. Had two volts there. Had 100 people there. We're shipping, sipping, sipping champagne and eating hors d'oeuvres. And my goodness, my goodness. On September 11th, we had a, a tough day. And a couple bumps in the road. I thank the gentleman. Mr. I, I got to tell you, Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate it. I know I'm going over. But the people of America should be outraged to have to sit here and listen to what we're saying and say, what are we doing to protect the other embassies and our personnel? They are, they are true patriots. But you know what they rely on? The State Department for their security. And we let them down. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Kelly. Mr. Chair, we, Mr. There, was Chairman. No, there was no question there, Ambassador.